Let's have a look at one of these tests that they have, uh, that they apply to see if a, a number is prime or not. Well, we're going to use a fact that I have mentioned before when talking about primes. Uh, we're going to use Fermat's Little Theorem. It's a, it's a theorem about prime numbers, and what it says is if you have a number, which I'll call A, and I'm going to raise it to a power prime number, so that's called P prime, and I subtract the original number, uh, then I say that this uh, is divisible by B. There we go. So if a number is prime, that's always true for whatever number A you pick. So let's do an example of this. Let's pick a prime. We know 5 is a prime. It's this, isn't it? Yes, OK. So 5 is a prime. So let's use that and we'll pick some, well, let's see 1 to the power 5. That's going to be easy. 1 to the power 5 minus 1 equals 0. Is it divisible by 5? Yes, we say 0 is divisible by 5. Uh, what about 2? 2 to the power 5 minus 2, so you get 30. Hey, and that's divisible by 5 as well. Let's just finish it off. 3 to the power 5 minus 3, that's 240. So these are all divisible by 5. 4 to the power 5 minus 4, divisible by 5 again. What about 5? Yeah, well, I think this one's a bit more obvious, so that's divisible by 5 too. And that's always going to be true. If, it's, if the number is prime. And this is what Fermat proved in the 17th century. This is absolutely true for all primes. Let's try another number. I'll try another number with you. I'm going to try the number 341. Does that pass my test? 2 to the power 341 minus 2. That's my test. Now, that's going to be a really large number. Computers can have methods that make this easier. So that's going to be a really large number. I'm not going to write that down. Huge number, but I can tell you now that this number is divisible by the number we're testing. It was 341. Thumbs up. Yeah, great. Uh, so it's passed the test. Let's try another one. Let's try another test. Let's do it with 3 then. We do this. 3 to the power 341 minus 3. Is this divisible? And this is where it fails the test. So this one is not divisible. Now, if it's not divisible, that tells me it's a composite number. There only needs to be one exception. It's very easy to fail this test. The more you pass, uh, the more evidence you are that you are a prime. And if you fail at all, then you are a composite number. Only composite numbers fail. If you have a composite number and it passes the test here, this number 2, in this case, is called a Fermat liar. Ooh, it's not really prime. It's lying. It tells me it's prime and it's not naughty. This number here, 3, which actually shows that it was composite after all, is called a Fermat witness, the innocent bystander. He goes into a, a witness protection program in case 2 comes and chases him after him. Yeah, Brady, you ask a good question, though. What would happen if there was a number that was composite that passed every test up to the size of the number. Is it possible? Yes, it is. There are numbers that will pass this test for every test you apply. Those are called Carmichael numbers. They have a name. The first Carmichael number is 561. So what that means is 2 to the power 561 minus 2 is divisible. 3 to the 561 minus 3, that passes the test, so does 4, and all the way down to 560, to 500, to the power 561, and it passes the test each time. Must be prime. Must be prime, must be prime. Unfortunately, it's not. 561 is equal to 3 by 11 by 17. Those are cool numbers. Those are really cool numbers, and there are infinitely many Carmichael numbers. The third Carmichael number is mathematician's favourite, 1,729. Nice. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> now, what do you reckon, Brady? Do you think this is a good test or not? Well, until you told me about Carmichael numbers, I thought it was a good test. Now I think it's almost useless if you're <laughs> looking for perfection. Ah. Well, it is useless. Yeah, well, it's not perfect. You're absolutely right. So, if you checked all numbers less than 25 billion, uh, the number of numbers that fail the test, if you used A was 2, 
All right. If A was 2, the number of numbers that fail that particular version of the test is 2,183 out of 25 billion. That's just using 2. So only a small fraction fail this test or, or, or give you things that you don't want, tell you that you have a prime when you don't have a prime. And you can apply other numbers anyway. So to pass this test is actually quite a high bar. So it is a good test. So it's a fairly, yeah, it's a fairly good test. Now there are other tests though. There are better tests that use pretty much the same idea, almost exactly the same idea. So if you understood that, you'll understand the other tests as well. Uh, there's one called the Bailey PSW test. Pretty much uses the same idea as that. Actually uses two tests in conjunction, so you have to pass them both. Yes, if you pass that test, you're probably a prime. In fact, uh, there are, they, they have found no counterexample. So anything that passes the test so far has actually been a prime. There's been no sneaky composite numbers, no counterexample to this, and they've checked large numbers for this. If you do find a counterexample, you find a cheeky composite number that passes the test, uh, the authors originally offered a prize. You could win $30. $30 could be yours. Now, don't worry. Since then, the, the amount of the prize, it's gone up since then. You can now win over $600. $620, in fact. Think of that. Think of that. Think what you could do with that money. Oh, you could buy yourself a chalk ice every day. Every day for a year, twice on Sundays. 